So we're currently standing in the left-hand gun sleeve of turret two, and we're only gonna be here for just a moment because there's only one thing I really wanna show you. We're gonna be talking about the uh, training and elevating gears and, and motors used to operate the guns. And from up here, there's one thing I wanna show you that we can't see from anywhere else. Down in this small compartment, you're going to see a 25 horsepower electric motor. This is a constant speed motor. And this is what's used to, to drive the uh, turret train mechanism. This is one of two that's in the ship, or in the turret rather. You can see that it's output, that there's a clutch there. And then you can see there's also a chain that's attached to the uh, opposite side of the clutch that goes down into the deck. That clutch and the operating lever you see there is what's used to engage and disengage the motor. Well, now why would you want to do that? That's because if for any reason you have a failure of this motor, you want to get it out of the system so you can disconnect it. Use the motor that's on the other side of the turret to, to uh, do your training. But also, when you disconnect that, it does. it can be used to engage that chain. That chain goes down to the chain falls where they can then manually turn the turret using a crew of men on chains and blocks. Now unfortunately what we can't show very well is through those little openings that are to the left of this photo. You can see that there's a kind of a bolted structure there and there. Those are the mounts that attach the worm gear to the worm ring that's used to actually rotate the motor. Now, the output shaft from the motor goes into the gun pit, and we'll be showing you that in just a second. All right, we're now in the gun pit below the uh, left-hand gun in turret two. Uh, I use this little excuse for a ladder on the side of the bulkhead to climb down in here. This, by the way, my foot is on is a tray, and this is where the powder bags come sliding out of that uh, little, through that little hatch there, but we're not going to talk about any loading at this time. What we want to concentrate on is what it took to ter train or rotate the turrets and to point or elevate the gun barrels. We start out with the training, and this is the trainer's position, this position on the left. You can see that they both sit underneath the gun, and by the way, there's no, they don't see anything move because at this point, the gun is fully enclosed in what's called the slide that the gun slides into when it recoils. But you can see that there's a, a little set of hand wheels on, on that pedestal, and then there's just a little excuse for a seat there. By turning those hand wheels, that hand wheel one way or the other, that makes the, the turret rotate to the left or to the right. The more he cranks that wheel, the faster it'll turn. There's a neutral position where nothing happens at all. Now, that's important to note because that electric motor that you just saw is always rotating, it's always turning. And what we're doing is we're actually transmitting the force from that motor through what's called a waterbury gear, also called a universal speed gear. And that's this device right there with the ribs on it. This is a marvelous piece of uh, early 20th century or late 19th century engineering. And uh, I'm gonna stop the video just to give you a really quick run through of how that works. The Waterbury gear or hydraulic speed gear is a critical piece of machinery that acts as a transmission to change direction, speed, and torque when rotating turrets and elevating guns. It can multiply the power of a 25 horsepower electric motor to smoothly and precisely turn a turret weighing more than 530 tons as fast as 100 degrees per minute or as slowly as 1 degree per minute. To do that, it converts the continuous output of a single speed electric motor into controllable, continuously variable output. Even though the design is extremely complicated and has scores of precisely fitted moving parts, it performs its job exceptionally well. At its heart is a series of pistons whose strokes can be varied with a tilting box that rotates and pushes against them. The fluid they pump is transferred to another set of pistons that create a turning force for an output shaft. You can see in the internal diagram that an electric motor turns the A end, or input shaft, 
at a constant speed. The shaft is attached to what is called a tilting box that pushes against a series of pistons arranged in a circle. The tilt of the box creates a wobbling motion as it rotates that pushes each piston in and out one after the other. If the box is tilted one way, the valve sequence runs one way. If tilted the other way, the sequence is reversed. As a piston is pushed, it shoves fluid through an orifice plate called a mid-plate that separates the A-side pistons from an opposing set on the B-side. Since the A-side pistons are pushed in sequence, the fluid being pumped will push B-side pistons in the same sequence. As the B-side pistons are pushed in and out, they push against another box that is tilted but not adjustable. Because they are pushed in a circular sequence, the box and attached B-end output shaft will rotate in the same direction as the A-side. However, the B-side will rotate at a different speed depending upon how much fluid is being pumped from the A-side. To change speed and direction of rotation, the angle of the tilting box on the A-end is changed using a control shaft that extends out of the top of the housing. This is what the trainer or pointer uses to control turret rotation and gun barrel elevation. Turning the shaft in one direction makes the box tilt and pump pistons in a sequence that rotates the output shaft and turns the turret one way. Tilting at the opposite angle reverses the sequence in direction of travel. Varying the tilt between the maximum angle and zero degree angle varies output speed. If the A box is set at zero degree angle, it still spins, but it will not have the wobbling motion needed to pump its pistons. Therefore, the B side pistons will not move and the output shaft will not turn. Okay, so what we have here is what's called the B end which is the output shaft, and it, it's a, as you can see, it's geared to this really large chain that they referred to as a silent chain. Now, the main reason that I came into this particular turret and into this gun sleeve is that that's normally covered with a heavy-duty sheet metal shield to protect uh, any crew members from being injured by the chain if it should be in operation. But for whatever reason, the, chain, the guard or shield is missing on this one, so it's a good opportunity to see it. To the left of that is a blower. This is where uh, large volumes of air were pumped in from below to uh, keep things cool in here. Back to the, uh, to the uh, motor, that silver tank on top is called a surge tank or a reservoir, and this was filled with the, uh, the fluid necessary to drive that. So, as we said, there's the electric motor on the other side. Whenever the trainer turns his control wheel one way or the other, then that makes the output shaft and the chain start turning. And as it turns, you can see that it goes through a significant gear reduction on the chain itself. Then that shaft that goes through the wall goes into that compartment that we really couldn't see into where the worm drive is. And it's from that worm drive that there's a gear that turns against the uh, gear ring that, rotate, that allows the turret to rotate. But if you look, you'll see there's a shaft coming out the other way. And it goes through this two inch thick bulkhead. And you can see there's another clutch in here. Now this clutch, let me turn this light down some, there we go. So what this clutch does is this is what allows switching between either this left hand training motor or the right hand training motor. You can't do both at the same time, nor would you ever want to do that because they could end up fighting each other and there would certainly be some level of damage. So by controlling it here, you switch between one training motor or the other. Plus there's also controls at the operator's position where he could switch control uh, from uh, either the left hand trainer or the right hand trainer position. So that's basically the way it's trained, that's what the equipment is. Now next we have the, um, how do we elevate the barrel or point it? And that's this right hand position here. And you can see he's got his own set of controls also. Uh, he doesn't have the little wheel controls, but there's a couple of handles that when he turns them, it does the same thing. You can see coming out of the bottom of it, there's a splined shaft. And what isn't really clearly seen, directly under his saddle, is another Waterbury gear, just like the one that's used to train or rotate the turret. So there's a, a 15 horsepower constant speed motor that sits on the forward end or the A side of that Waterbury gear. And as he turns his handles, 
then that boot makes this shaft running here start rotating. And excuse me while I'm going to step back, try not to trip or fall. So, as that shaft turns, it turns these beveled gears, and this enters what's called the oscillating bearing and nut. And what that does is that rotates against this large threaded shaft, and then that threaded shaft will be pulled up or down, just kind of like a screw jack on a car. And as we step back farther, you can see that it's attached to what's called the gun yoke, but that's what elevates the gun. It pulls the breech of the gun up or down and can be used to precisely aim it. Now on the other side of this bulkhead is yet another a set of clutches because you can see that on that shaft it actually it also goes through through this bulkhead here. And then there is a clutch that allows either separate operation of the two barrels to where they can be elevated or depressed individually or if there's a motor failure or if you're simply wanting basically synchronized aiming then you can hook the two together. At that point one of the two pointers would just sit back with his hands by his sides and then one pointer could be used to, to elevate both barrels. So that's the basic operation on how this, these things work in here.